Welcome to the Yoga Teacher Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Ray, yoga teacher. You are needed now more than ever, and your unique voice, message, and offering needs to be shared with the world. In this podcast, we'll talk about all things related to teaching yoga to help you thrive doing what you love most, teaching yoga. So let's dive in. Today is part one of the abundance and money mindset episode. So in this episode, I cover abundance versus scarcity thinking and common money blocks. So stay tuned for the next episode as I go into part two, 10 steps to take to shift into an abundance money mindset. Today, we are talking about abundance and money mindset for yoga teachers, abundance and money mindset for yoga teachers. So this conversation is all about cultivating an abundance mindset. There's a limiting belief that is floating around the yoga community. It sounds something along these lines that yoga teachers don't make money or you can't make money teaching yoga or you shouldn't charge for your yoga services or yoga should be free. And the truth is my belief is as a yoga teacher, you, yes, you, offer such a valuable gift to the world. And your service and offering is worth everything. It's worth everything. So a major block that gets in the way of cultivating an abundance mindset are your personal beliefs around money, your personal money story that you tell yourself, whether it's conscious or unconscious. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna dive into shifting from a scarcity money mindset to an abundance money mindset. We're gonna talk about the common money blocks and the importance of believing that you are worthy and capable of abundance. Worthy and capable of abundance. Money mindset and yoga teachers. Again, I know so many yoga teachers are uncomfortable talking about money. They're struggling financially or they're stuck in this hamster wheel of hustling group classes like I used to do. I used to teach, what, 15, 18, 22 classes a week and I burned out quick. Back when I think back to that period of time about five or six years ago when I was hustling the 18 to 22 classes per week, I, at the time, I also had a lot of limiting beliefs and money blocks, a lot of beliefs that I wasn't necessarily capable of growing an income beyond what I was safe and comfortable with. Now looking back, I can see that it was all really directly related to my own self-worth and what I thought I was capable of. Some common money beliefs that are floating around the community or just beliefs in general that are floating around the community You can't make money teaching yoga. Money isn't spiritual. You shouldn't charge or charge a lot for yoga. Yoga should be free. So those are just some common ones. And now I ask if you're here live with me, I'd like you to drop into the chat if you have had those thoughts before or if you connect to any of them or if you have other ones you wanna drop in. Let's talk about why it's even a good thing or why is it even beneficial to actually earn the income that we desire as yoga teachers. So if you are listening to this, if you're listening to the recording or the podcast, you're a yoga teacher, most likely. And when you, as a yoga teacher, you make the income that you desire, it can assist you in creating a greater impact within your community. So that's whether it's to a group of five people, whether it's just five people that show up in your classes or your students or your private clients, or it's a group of 500 people, you can still make a greater impact. And here's why. Because you won't be wasting energy worrying about how to pay your bills or taking care of yourself or your family, feeding yourself, feeding your family, which allows you to freeze up more energy that allows you to serve your students and your clients, allows you to show up from a space of feeling grounded and centered versus a space of feeling worry and panic and lack and scarcity. It also allows you to invest into yourself to grow your toolbox as a teacher. It can help create a greater ripple effect if that's what you want. 
And it's also okay if you don't. So again, it doesn't matter if you want to reach five people or 500 people. Greater impact doesn't necessarily mean how many lives do you personally touch. You can create massive impact with the five people that show up to your class. So I'm going to create a whole other topic about charging for your services. But just to touch on that, the truth is that if you want to make a good income teaching yoga, it's going to have to be outside of the studio and gym model. That's not going to suffice. It's not going to be enough. And like I said earlier, part of my story, I was teaching 18 to 22 classes a week for depending on where I was teaching, 25 to $40 a class. And I still wasn't making enough. That's not where the money is, unfortunately. Now let's talk about shifting from a scarcity money mindset to an abundance money mindset. So let's first take a look at scarcity and how it shows up or might show up for you, maybe your loved ones. Scarcity is a deeply rooted belief that you carry around. And for most people, it's an unconscious thought pattern or belief, a belief that there isn't enough or you are not enough. It's a thought pattern and it's actually not real. So I just want that to kind of sit with you for a minute. Your thoughts, again, we as yoga teachers, we know this, thoughts aren't actually truth. They're not actually real. The scarcity mindset tells you there isn't enough out there or I'm not going to get what is out there. Maybe those people can get it, but I can't seem to get it for myself. So that's the lack mentality. That's the scarcity mentality. Scarcity means that you are stuck in lack, that you don't have enough time. It tells you that you don't have enough love, enough money, enough private yoga clients, enough yoga students, enough whatever it is, fill in the blank. People who have scarcity mindsets are often the first people to judge and criticize others. They are also the first to point out a flaw in something or someone. They might be jealous, resentful, or have a hard time being genuinely happy with someone else's success. I know we've all felt that way before, of course. That's a human emotion and thought is to look at someone else's success and say, gosh, I want that. Why can't I seem to have that for myself? Or this sense of jealousy comes up man, I want what they have so bad. And instead of celebrating and also wanting what they have, it turns into wanting what they have and being jealous. Scarcity is deeply rooted in insecurity. This belief that we are not enough as we are right now. And when someone in scarcity sees someone with something they want, they either try to bring someone in success down or it triggers them into a spiral of self-doubt and they're thrown into what I like to call comparisonitis. <laughs> comparisonitis, again, it's a common human emotion. It's a common thing that happens to us. We see someone else's success or we hop on social media, we see what this yoga teacher is doing and we start to compare ourselves and we can spiral down pretty fast. I know it's happened to me, of course, it happens to everyone, but it can spiral us really quickly down into this rabbit hole of, wow, they're doing it good and I'm not, so I'm not doing it good enough. I'm not enough. I'm not capable. I'm not worthy of it. So you start to create these thoughts that end up becoming a reality or it can trigger the belief that another's achievement means that it lessens your chance to also achieve something big. This person truly believes that there isn't enough room for everyone, for you both, or enough money, or enough yoga students, or enough yoga clients. And there's an abundance of people, of money, of resources going around. It's just being able to recognize, okay, so the people that end up getting it are the ones that just keep showing up that trust, that step into fear, step into uncomfortable places. I talk about this all the time. So they might also have a hard time sharing information and giving because they're afraid of not receiving anything back in return, or they feel that someone's going to steal from them and get ahead of them. For example, stealing their content 
And I remember, again, I'll be really honest, years ago when I started training and doing workshops for yoga teachers, I was actually scared to give away my content of what helps me, of what's been helping me in my yoga, my yoga teaching, my sequencing, my business. I was like, hey, wait, these are my tools. Why would I give it to someone else? Well, because I was afraid that if I gave it away, then that person might have the success that I won't. So I had to really work through that. And now I believe, oh my gosh, there's enough to go around. As you can see, I wouldn't be doing this podcast and giving away content and value if I didn't believe there's enough for everyone. And it'll come back to me in some form. The more you practice a thought, the more you believe it, and the more you find evidence that it's real for you. We have the power to completely rewire our brains, whether it's with a negative thought pattern, like I'm not capable of achieving success, or whether it's with a positive thought pattern, I am capable and worthy of success and abundance. So a scarcity mindset might show up for yoga teachers with thoughts like, there are already so many yoga teachers out there, why should I even try? Teachers are already doing what I want to do. Or it shows up comparing yourself, like I said earlier, it shows up comparing yourself to other yoga teachers and everything I just listed above. It shows up as scrolling on social media, seeing another teacher's feed, or again, air quote, success, because what you see on social media sometimes only represents the good. You don't see the mess. You don't see the struggle. So we end up comparing ourselves to only a little tiny blip of what we see in someone else's journey. But we don't know how many years that person has worked to get to this point. We don't know how the challenges they've faced and overcome, but we're comparing ourselves to what we see on their Instagram. And again, it throws you into this rabbit hole of spiraling down and comparing yourself and, well, I'm not even going to try because this person's already doing it. An example for me of this would be, what, maybe four years ago, three, four years ago, when I had the vision and the desire to start to lead 200-hour yoga teacher trainings, I wanted to do it, but I had thoughts that kept stopping me from trying, from starting, because... I would say, man, why would I even try? There are tons. There are thousands of 200-hour YTTs. Why should I try? Or the Phoenix Valley has a ton of trainings already that are established, that people know. Why would I try? So that thought stopped me from pursuing it for a while until it just kept tapping me on the shoulder, tapping me on the shoulder. And I finally said, you know, I want to do this thing. This is in my heart. This is my purpose. This is my passion. So I realized that I had to let go of those thoughts and just step into it. And now I'm about to start leading the fourth 200 hour program I have. It's been incredible, but I could have easily stopped myself from that if I let those thoughts hold me back. For those of you that are on live with me, How does a scarcity mindset show up for you? Like the examples I gave, there are already so many teachers out there. Why should I even try? Or someone's already doing what I want to be doing. Or maybe a thought of, I really want to start a private yoga business, but there are already so many people doing private yoga again. So are those, are those clients even going to find me? How am I going to find them? Margie, Craving, needing positive feedback afterward, second guessing myself. Ah, yes. Okay, so I know exactly what you're talking about. This might show up. Okay, I just led a yoga class. I need to hear feedback from my students to tell me that it was good enough. And then under that is that I'm good enough. I know exactly what you mean. And that's something that I've talked about before is we can become addicted to the feedback as well because it it feeds our ego right? Hey, yoga teacher. If you're running a yoga business or you're just beginning to build your yoga business, which I know many of you are, definitely listen in. I just launched an online course and training for yoga teachers called Grow Your Yoga Business by Niching Down. Why is it even important to have a niche as a yoga teacher and yoga business owner, or as I like to say, a yogipreneur? 
Are you trying to grow your private client business? Stuck in the studio, Jim grinds, teaching 15 to 25 yoga classes per week, which I used to be stuck in. Are you wanting to grow your income beyond $25 to $40 per class? Trying to become a full-time yoga teacher while working a part-time job in the meantime? Are you wondering where and how to find private clients and students? Wanting to build an online yoga business? Spinning around wondering, what do I even post on social media? How do I create content? Wondering how to create and fill your yoga classes, your events, your trainings, your retreats. It is the first step to building your brand and business. We can't be all things to all people. If you're trying to teach and speak to everyone, you end up speaking to no one. You end up blurring into the giant sea of yoga teachers without standing out, without sharing your unique voice and message. This online workshop is seriously incredible and it's jam packed with content to help you gain clarity on what your yoga niche is, who your ideal client is, and you'll learn how to create content with clear messaging so you attract the right people into your business along with so much more. I really appreciate all of you who support and listen in to the Yoga Teacher Circle podcast. And I'd love to offer you a discount code to receive $10 off this course. Just simply use the coupon code YTC podcast at the checkout. So I hope you'll join me. And if you're ready to jump in, you can find the course on my website at taylorrayyoga.com under Niche Yoga Biz Workshop. Now back to the episode. I'd like to talk about and look at an abundance mindset. So we just talked about how a scarcity mindset can show up. Now let's look at an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset is deeply rooted in the belief that who you are and where you are in your life right now is perfect, that there's nothing wrong with it and life is unfolding exactly as it should. So with an abundance mindset, you see other people's success and achievements as inspiration, as motivation, because it shows you that you can also achieve success in your own way. They show you that it's possible. So you're not threatened by the success of others, because again, they show you like, wow, if this person is doing the thing I want to be doing, I can do it too. That's how I've been able to create anything that I do. When I wanted to lead a yoga retreat years ago, I would look at people leading retreats and say, well, it's obviously possible they're doing it. Why not me? And then a 200 hour program. Well, it's obviously possible people are doing it everywhere. Why not me? And then you just take action and you take steps to make it happen. So now, you know, and again, I used to be jealous though. I used to have the resentment, the fear, well, they're already doing it and I can't do it. And now when I see someone's success, I see someone with a similar thing, a similar offering that I want to create. Again, it just shows me, well, A, there must be a need if it's already out there and people are joining this offering or this program. And B, if this person's doing it, why not me? That means I can do this too. An abundance mindset believes there is enough room for everyone. There is enough success, enough money, enough yoga students, enough yoga clients for everyone. You know and trust that if someone else has something, again, that just means that you can also attain and reach that same thing in your own version. An abundance mindset trusts that there's value in helping others, helping others rise versus hoarding everything to yourself. So I shared my example earlier, years ago, when I wanted to start working with yoga teachers, I had that fear, well, why would I give away all my content, everything that I've been using, all my tools? Why would I help them when I'm trying to build myself? And now I had to really work through that because I didn't like that, but it was true. It came up for me, that thought, that fear. And now I'm like, I want to give it all away because I've seen already the magic that can happen. I see the magic that happens when I, when I give, when I serve, and I see it helps other people and that genuinely makes me feel good inside. And then it brings more into my life. So the return, whether it's uh, monetary, whether it's relationships, energy, whatever it is, is massive. It's more than I could ever imagine. You also focus on opportunities. And you look at things and you say, how can I solve this problem instead of a lack mentality or looking at what you don't have or what you can't do or how nothing works? 
You believe in the power of collaboration over competition. You believe in the power of serving because you trust it'll all come back plus more. Whether it shows up just what I was just saying, whether it shows up in the form of money, relationships, service to others in their healing journey, experiences, or just internal growth. So another good example is this podcast. I don't make any money from this, but I gain so much in return like the relationships that I'm building with all of you and the guests that come on and the experiences I have. And then also I'm growing skills in public speaking and in interviewing, in creating content and connecting with the yoga community in a larger way. So the return is massive, but I'm not making money and I'm okay with that because everything I gain from it is so incredible. The other thing I'd like to say, even with the example of the podcast, when I had the idea, I want to have a yoga podcast for teachers. The first thought that came up was, you don't know how to run a podcast. Who are you to try to, to have a podcast? You've never done it. You, you don't speak on video. This is new for you. All these things came up and I didn't let that stop me. I said, okay, yes. And how can I do this? So what did I have to do? I had to spend a lot of time. I invested my time to learn, to educate. Asking myself, well, what do I need to learn to make this thing happen? Who do I need to talk to? What kind of YouTube videos do I need to watch? And then I'm just learning as I go as well. Another thing is someone with an abundance mindset is okay with their flaws and their insecurities. And this doesn't mean they don't have insecurities. It just means that they're aware of them and they work through them. Instead of allowing the insecurities, hold them back, stay small and stay safe. Stay in the comfort zone. Comfort zone does not equal growth. When you step outside of your comfort zone, that's when you grow. So that's just a bit about an abundance mindset. Before I start to actually talk about like money, before I dive into money, I want you to fill in the blank. Money is... So what word or phrase popped up for you? Money is... Money is just energy. It actually has no meaning. Money has no meaning. Money is neutral. It's neither good or bad. The beliefs you have about money are just sentences and thoughts in your head. They're not true until you believe them. And even then they're still not true, but you feel that they are. So money only has the meaning that we give it. And we are all really, really good at giving money different meanings. Money is simply a tool that can help you create your ideal life. It's energy, it's a tool, it's an exchange. So some common money blocks. I can't afford it. I don't have the money. I'll never be able to make enough money. There's not enough time to make more money. Money is evil. Money causes suffering. Money is hard. Money is hard to make. Money is hard to keep. I'm not good with money. The harder you work, the more money you make. I can't save money. Can any of you relate to any of the ones that I just listed? The, the list goes on, of course. There are a ton of common money blocks and money beliefs. As yoga teaches us, you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not real, but you get stuck. We, but we get stuck believing that our thoughts are real. So we continue to think them and attract more of that into your reality. So your thoughts and beliefs around money continue to keep you stuck in that money story. So it might happen unconsciously, like you might self-sabotage an opportunity for growth to keep you in a space that's comfortable and safe. Your ego wants to keep you safe. And anything that triggers an alarm in your brain or your body, that anything outside of your comfort zone is not safe. You can self-sabotage in many ways without even realizing it. So Tracy says, money can be seen as dirty, manipulative. Yes. Yeah. So again, money equals uh, money is evil or people that have money aren't good. That's another one. A lot of people have judgments on people that do have money that are wealthy. I want to share a money story that I used to have and like the craziest thing happened from it. So this was about, what, six-ish, six to seven, maybe even eight years ago. I was newly sober, 
I'm now eight and a half years sober, just over. So I was really newly sober. I was struggling financially, like, like so bad. And I was working two jobs. I was making minimum wage. It was a struggle. I was just like stuck in this money, money mindset, money hole and this hamster wheel cycle. Never had a savings account and I really wanted to start saving money. So I had this, I set this goal, which at the time was like so massive for me. So again, I was newly sober and I never really had before that a relationship with money. I was just kind of like in this world of addiction. So having a goal to save money was a really big step for me. And my first goal was to save $1,500. Like I wanna just have $1,500 in a savings account. I thought that was really cool, really big. Also very scary, it felt impossible. So for about a year, I would save like $500, maybe up to a thousand. And then something happened in my life where an emergency happens, like my car broke down. And so I had to pull money out of it to go get my car fixed or random things would happen. And so I kept fluctuating between I would get 500 to seven to 800 and then I'd have to pull money out. And so for a year I was in this cycle and the story I kept saying was, I can't save money. Why is money so hard to save? Why can't I save money? I cannot save money. And I would say that same thing in my head in different versions. Or once I get money, I lose it. I kept thinking that for about a year. And then after a year, I finally saved $1,500. I had it in cash. It was like such a proud moment. And I kept it in an envelope at home in a drawer in my desk. At this time, I lived with my mom. And again, newly sober, lived with my mom, just learning how to be like a functioning adult in the world. And I remember I was out traveling at this time. So I had my $1,500 at home in a drawer. My mom was deep cleaning the house. And I told her ahead of time that the top drawer, all the papers in there you can throw out. That's all I really said. But she accidentally got confused and she went into a different drawer and took out the papers and threw it away. My envelope with $1,500 was in that stack. And she literally, she didn't know, she didn't know there was money in there at all. She had no idea that she was throwing this away. She thought it was the stack of papers to toss. And so I didn't come home for about a week after that point. The trash was already taken. She threw away the $1,500 that I worked so hard to save. And she literally threw it into the trash. And then the trash came and picked it up. So again, of course, my money story was like, holy shit, I cannot save money. The $1,500 was literally thrown out into the trash. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, so it was just such a confirmation of my beliefs become reality. After that point, I was like so upset and I really looked at, I looked at everything and I said, you know, something's not working here. What, what is it? So this was around the time that I was starting to get more curious about money. And I ended up enrolling into like a money course to look at my mindset, to learn, learn more about money. I did this course and then I realized, wow, I have so many money blocks. And looking back at that whole scenario, it made so much sense at that point. The story I said in my head, it literally happened. Like the money got thrown away. My mom felt horrible too. Then I realized, you know, so of course my belief at that time was heightened that I can't save money. And then that's when I realized, okay, I need to do some work around here. It took years. It's still taking time, of course. But I, I realized I was doing it all wrong. I realized that I needed to understand my money mindset, my beliefs, my fears, everything, my money story, everything I was telling myself around money. And I did a, a lot of major work. And then years later, like in one year, I was able to save $40,000 with ease and flow. And that blew my mind, especially attached to the story that I used to have that I can't save money. And then to be able to work through my money blocks, my beliefs, my limiting beliefs, my fears, and save over 40,000 in one, in one year, which to me, you know, it just showed me like, oh my gosh, anything's possible. I want to ask you now, so I ask you now, what is the most common money story that you tell yourself? What do you repeat in your head? And it's hard because maybe you're not conscious of it. Maybe it's so unconscious that you don't even realize you're saying this story. Okay, I like what you said. Money is a gift that is shared. I love that. A hundred percent. It's a gift that flows in and out of our lives. 
as I keep going now, let's look at different thoughts and beliefs that we just covered different ones for the scarcity mindset, common money blocks. And now I want to talk about different thoughts and beliefs for an abundance mindset. So that looks like money is easy. Money is a tool. Money is energy. I love money. Value creates money. Time and money are not directly related. I don't have to work harder to create money. I can work smarter and choose things that are more aligned. I can love my work and create a lot of money. I always have enough money. Giving money feels good. Paying my bills feels good. I'm excited to spend money and invest into myself. Money is fun. So those are, those are just a few. And again, the list goes on. The list goes on. Are there any of those that you felt like, ooh, that really hits me, that really resonates with me? I love that one. And I'll say one for me that I've really connected to over the last couple of years is money flows into my life with ease. And I also love to say and, and write down my affirmations or my meditation. I use money as a tool to design and create my ideal life. It's just a tool. It's a tool that flows in and out. Thank you so much for listening in today. I'd love to stay connected with you in between episodes. You can find me on Instagram at Taylor underscore Ray Yoga and join the free private yoga teacher circle Facebook group, which is full of some pretty awesome and badass yoga teachers. 